the Soundwave Chronicles podcast brought to you by FD Productions engages in conversations with pioneering musicians, producers, and experts from the music industry. We get the inside scoop on what it takes to make it in the music industry today by delving into the sources of their inspiration, their creative process, and much more as we explore a wide range of their experiences. I am your host, Asher Love, and I want to welcome you today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome to the Soundwave Chronicles podcast, and I've got a very special guest today by the name of Carol Havlicek. Very excited to speak with him. He's a very talented musician and composer, producer out in Prague and Los Angeles. He has done some incredible work. He's a multi-instrumentalist, travels the world. He's a musician, author, and he focuses on writing for television series and film. His work has appeared on HBO in Europe. I'm going to let you guys listen to some of the fascinating stories he has to share. Uh, Carol, I want to welcome you to the show. How are you doing? Uh, great. How are you? Thank you for the invitation. It's, it's awesome. a pleasure. And I'm glad we could work out the timing here. So if you could tell me, you're you're based in Prague and also Los Angeles. So are you commuting regularly between the two locations? Yeah, I do. Because uh, I have a twin brother and he lives in uh, Los Angeles for 25, maybe almost 30 years. So I'm still going forth and back, visiting him, you know, and do some work here and there. Mostly remotely because, you know, the laptops are pretty cool. So you can do a lot of magic on laptops. So it's easy. Uh, okay. So now is your brother in music? Uh, sorry if I don't understand that. Uh, my brother, he's twin brother, but he's a painter. But also he can play guitar. Sometimes we play together. And we used to have a band when we were like, a, I don't know, teenage, in teenage age. So, so he's a musician. I can relate. I have three other siblings. They're all musicians. So uh, there's yeah. nothing quite like growing up with with siblings who are like minded in in the world of music. Uh, so sometimes it's, it's pretty sorry to interrupt you, but sometimes it's pretty cool when you jam with twin brother. So you can course. predict all the course progressions. So it's really like a ma magic moment. You know, it's cool. It's different. Abs absolutely. Uh, that uh, that brotherly love. Do you have any other siblings, or or that's no, just just one. Yeah, very nice. Uh -huh. So uh, he must be thrilled that you can travel there and get some of your work done, right? I'm assuming produce for the networks and network uh, with people doing television. Yeah. And then you head back yeah. to Prague. Is that how it works? Mostly, yeah. But it's like, a, you know, it's two markets. The European is totally different than American. You know, everything is different. You know, also the the content on the Netflix or all the media is different. Everything is different. So it's pretty cool to have a both markets, you know, sometimes work for European, mostly for European and some uh, small stuff for American. So it's refreshing for me, like to have a two different countries, cultures, you know, languages. Now, uh, I'm assuming that translates to the, the nature of the music that you're producing um, in Europe versus versus uh, the United States. Could you elaborate on that? You know, in Europe, you know, I think, you know, we got a really like, like a deep roots in classical music because, you know, it was a mecca of classical music. So it's here everywhere, every theater, you know, concerts, you know, on every corner in the city. So we got a, we got a deep roots, you know, in the art. So, you know, I heard some, some uh, like, um, uh, comments from Americans like, ah, oh, you got a pretty big European uh, style. So <laughs> maybe it's hard to, you know, say for me, but maybe it's a little bit different. But if, but on the other side, if you see the modern like movies, you know, everything is very similar, like, you know, the minimal stuff, you know, mixing electronic music with, with classical music. It's, I think it's similar, but it's hard, it's hard to, to say for me to, to comment myself, you know. So this is interesting. As as, as a musician, uh, as a classically trained musician um, and composer myself, mm -hmm. I I feel like th there's somewhat of a musical wasteland out here in the United States, and I <laughs> yearn very much for for European in input in terms of in terms of music because the whole classical realm, I feel like it's it's just it's not as strong, it's not as present here in the U.S. as it is by you. And that that pains me as a classical musician. Um, now you are. Uh, could you elaborate on the 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 music, like the the genres of music that you focus on, like for instance for the HBO special and so forth? Mm -hmm. 
you know, um, uh, like I said before, uh, I love to score music for video. It means I'm focusing on uh, movies and TV shows. Sometimes I do like a whole music, you know, for TVs, like all the jingles, you know, identity music and all the package of, of, of identity music because it's also with the picture. So I really love it. My, my favorite style is, let's say, neoclassical because I'm a trained pianist, so I can play piano and um, that's that's my main instrument. And I'm glad that I have a piano as a main instrument because it's very helpful in studio because you have a, a MIDI controller, so it's like a you know heart of the studio, so yes. which is great. But I can play guitar, bass, you know, drums, uh, flutes, and stuff, but not not really well. Just just you know, the piano is my my my, my main instrument. Uh, and what was the question? Yeah, was the, yeah. Every movie is different because you know before I start to work on movie, I love to talk with producers. You know. You know, uh, screenwriters and, and directors and music editors about the music. So, I always want to have instrument instrumentation in my head before I start to work. So it means you know every movie is different. You know, <clears throat> some uh, movies are more on guitar. You know, space. You know, sound. Some I some are like more retro. Let's say nineties. You know, uh, synthesizers. Some of them are you know classical only. But I love to combine all the genres, like use like let's say eighties electronic stuff and put an orchestra on top of it and do a really cool mixes like unheard layers of something. So I uh, I love the new waves, you know, how to approach you know the theme and, and work on it in terms now, of instruments and now style. now my listeners, I want them to understand why why you're you're such a big deal and why you are playing you're producing for the big networks because you have this vast array of knowledge uh in many different genres cross genres so you're very fluid with respect to to uh providing the kind of music that these networks are looking for and mm -hmm. uh you have to be very versatile um as, based on what you're telling me and and from what i've heard just just watching movies just as a regular movie watcher um but you prefer to do so you prefer classical over like mainstream type rock or you just love to blend you know blend. I, i'm not a big fan of uh pop music or class or or just like a the pop chart music because i have no time to follow because i still i'm still in the studio when i'm not in studio i enjoy in silence and in, in, in quiet places so i'm not listening to radios and all those stuff so uh i really like the classical music but in a new way i always try to always try to shift it in 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 some new directions, you know, new angles to tweak it a little bit to get something new because it's it's funny and I want to have a fun when I do music. So I don't want to stuck like the classical. Sometimes I have to do it because, you know, uh, the producers wants to have it on, or directors. But mostly I'm always you know, try to little push them, you know, to, hey, what, what about this one? So it's a new way. So it sounds a little bit like different. Mm. So... That's my style. Still, still looking for something new and uh, the noises. You know, some, some, even sometimes, you know, to be on the edge between sound design and music, like somewhere there. You like to push the envelope and and try new sounds, play yeah. new sounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I got a plenty of synthesizers here. You know, all are are connected. You know, so when I touch something, there's always sound. So sometimes, you know, I'm looking for unheard like loops or some kind of, you know. Uh, feedbacks from synthesizer and, and, and new stuff. So I love the hardware. What are your, um, I have so many questions. I don't even know where to start. Uh, I, before I move on to those questions about the midis and about the loops, um, you, it's funny how you mentioned how your main instrument is a, is piano and, and you're not as strong with uh, guitar or bass but good enough to like get along. If I were to choose one instrument to be the best at as a composer producer, I would choose the piano. <laughs> so sure. I think you are blessed. For me, my main instrument is violin. Uh, and secondary to that is the keyboard right here, here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, th that's, th those are my thoughts. And I'm, I'm assuming you're pretty comfortable with the fact that your, your number one instrument is, is piano, considering what you're able to do as far as the structure, the spine of the, of the song before you build it out. 
Absolutely. And when I'm in studio, uh, like a big scoring stage with orchestra, I always play in the piano by myself because I know how to play it. So it's big, big like a benefit, you know, because I can also like give, give an advance, you know, or, or or some notes, you know, when recording because I'm part of the you know group of the musicians. So. Now, uh, when you're composing these scores, are you just keeping it simple and doing everything yourself or are you bringing in other live musicians ever uh, to for these these scores? I love to see other musicians playing my 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 uh, notes, my music because it always a little bit different because of personality of of the player plus my notes creating the magic so i'm starting because of the budget so always starting to do, do recording everything by myself that's that's cool like i can record all the guitars you know everything to create like a demo and they will use the demo for edit editing and and uh because sometimes you do a lot of versions so it's, it's gonna be hard to record everything with the orchestra and live instruments do they will hate you you know after two days still recording again 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 yeah. so i'm doing this 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 like a messy work, you know, by myself in studio. And once it's locked, so everybody says, okay, that's the perfect music. I'm recording, you know, all the instruments again, but not all of them, usually like a top layers of the of the solo instrument, everything, because sometimes when I record, I replace all demo music with the live music you know, with orchestra, eh, losing something. So I always trying to, you know, um, mixing and blending both because the sub bases from the synthesizers are very heavy, powerful. So I always keeping the sub bases, you know, there and then some on the top layer, some some live instruments together. But I you know, you know, recently, like a, two weeks ago, I recorded just just four strings, very quiet, very intimate. So there was no place for for digital sound. So it must be perfectly played in, in one take because I I really wanna if I if I recording the live instruments, I wanna hear it in one take because that's about it. So when you're when you're doing what you described as like a scale down, just like four instruments, not as opposed to a full orchestra type of situation, are you are you right spending the time to write out the scores, uh, meaning tr transcribe it from what you have pre recorded? How are you making it, you know, so that you can just pump it out with these four musicians very quickly, or are you just sending it to a transcriber who's maybe quicker at it? You know, both ways. But you know, that's the, I think the biggest difference here in in uh, if you if you score music in Czech Republic, so you got no team, you got, you have to do everything by yourself because you know the budget is is like not that big. Like if you do like a class A American movie, of course. So I have to be able to do everything, like you know, do the quick, you know, now to like say you know say okay, so I can just you know downgrade it from the full orchestra just to let's say four strings or quintet quickly because he's no time and no people but if i do like a the best biggest movie i can have someone who will help me with all the arrangement because it's much much better for me because you know i'm lazy i'm using computer for for everything so you know it's like a step back to you know sit with the paper you know and start to start writing the notes so it's, it's isn't that what we hard. all do isn't that what what all composers are doing now i mean there's just it, it, nobody has nobody has hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring in a full orchestra for every yeah. song they use that for the live performances for the most part mm -hmm. or maybe like you mentioned blending in but uh yeah but I always try to you know have a live instrument even if there is no budget i i always doing it because you know yeah. that's the magic and i think it's like it, it it's the same with a, with a pop music you know the you know in the world it's endless number of pop songs every day on on uh, streaming services is the same in the music for movies if you want to be visible so do something differently so that's my you know uh motto let's say that yeah uh and and a lot of that pop music is at least you know the hip-hop the rap you know we, we hear it all the time in the united states i, I i'm personally a little bit bit tired of it of the, of the same same kind of stuff and i'm hoping that with all the like the reemergence of fantasy and Marvel, that type, those types of movies that are pushing the the classical, the neoclassical type genres, I'm hoping that you and I, you know, can enjoy uh, a, like a new world of 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 just a larger number of fans that are into the sophisticated type music that we're into. Um, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be step by step. It's not a mainstream, but it's still it's still going up. So I can feel it. Yeah, and it's it's incumbent upon 
individuals like you and and, and others that uh, to to bring it back to life uh, because mm -hmm. I think well what are your thoughts on that like why do you think that uh, sort of classical has gone to the wayside what what other forces do you think uh, have 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 influenced music towards more more I, you could say mediocre or simple more simplistic type of uh, types of genres you know what it, here in Czech Republic you know it's still like maybe I am the only one who is doing and producing like his own classical music, neoclassical music and performing live with a big orchestra because, you know, it's much, the budget must be so different because there's 80 people on the stage, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, it's unbelievable if you play from with a band with Ableton and drums. So it's, it's very mm -hmm. easy. So I think it's a question of money. So I can afford it, you know, when I reach some level in composing for movies, so then I can went back and started to to play the songs uh, with the orchestra live. So I think the people can, you, you can like get more people, like, like an audience, like be more visible if you play live. That's the, that's, the, that's the thing what I started just two years ago or three years ago. Yeah, maybe two and a half years ago. I started playing live because I realized I'm like a studio red hidden. <laughs> Nobody knows about the music. But if you go out on the stage, so you got more, more, uh, people and on, on every gig there is more people who will love it and next time they will show up with, the, with another friend so it's, it's like a step-by-step -step increasing you know the popularity of the neoclassical music here that's my plan so that's a that's what i'm working for in a lot for the last two and so you, you're you're touring in in europe for the most part yeah yeah so and i'm also uh the ambassador of uh petrov pianos petrov is a great czech company like 150 years ago they started creating the real grand pianos the best ones and wow. I, i'm playing my music uh like as this because you know the the last album i released is a two and a half years ago it's a, called spoken so it's an orchestral um uh, like a neoclassical music but mm -hmm. i simplified and i can play it just on piano so i'm traveling with the piano playing the record in, in in this minimalistic way around the world so i played in singapore los angeles abu dhabi prague blah 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 ibiza uh oh time. that's where that's where your tour went yeah yeah so i'm touring with orchestra big one but it's so expensive some people got not you know didn't have enough money for this big like uh production show. yeah production exactly thank you so i'm using uh the petrov and playing the piano just by myself okay uh, wait so now uh, out in ibiza or los angeles you you you're doing the piano or you're doing the orchestra piano piano, piano yeah. okay but mm -hmm. like in europe you have the orchestra yeah i just started you know i just i'm gonna have only one <laughs> concert with a full orchestra and then it's gonna be next one so big one it's gonna be 24th of uh november 24th of november yeah, this year in o2 arena which is the biggest place uh biggest like a venue place here in Prague. So mm -hmm. it's going to be there 80, 80 pieces orchestra on the stage with me. So I will play my record with, with this huge number of musicians. So it's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope it's going to open more doors for the next shows abroad or somewhere. So I'm oh, still I'm, starting. I'm still on the beginning. Yeah. I'm sure it will. Uh, very excited for you and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so you've been, you started the touring about two to three years ago, you, you mentioned? Yeah. 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 So, so now, what pro like what what were the steps that you went from being a composer producer, you know, to shifting to, you know, to live performance? Like, did you contact an agent? Did did booking agents just reach out to you? What did you do? You know, it was like from my side because <clears throat> when I I was still sitting in studio doing something, and uh, I said, okay, so I I I haven't seen the feedback from the people. Like, I'm doing like a big movies and. Maybe on uh, on the premiere day you are in the cinema and and see uh, the the movie with the people, so mm -hmm. it's kind of feedback. But but sorry, I got a phone. Uh, but I said okay, so I wanna feel it more from people what they think about the music. It, like give me some like more motivation to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I said okay, so I will start just small show with the piano so i transcripted all the you know big stuff to the piano solo piano uh pieces and uh i got a pretty cool feedback from the people so i said okay so that could be like a, my next like step i'll be i'll be music 
composer slash performer. Mm -hmm. So I can still do the movies because that's what I love most. That's my life. And then the performances to 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 show the, the young people, the young composers or or the young you know players who just freshly uh, finished the school so there's options like to be in prague in czech republic and and uh, and be a professional musician and be like a yeah you, you can just do it you, you cannot have a like a second job to survive but you can just do the music the new neoclassical music and be be uh be okay mm mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, so you want to inspire the next generation uh, of of composers. Um, that, that's the point. Yeah, show them yeah. that they they can also uh, make a career out of, of out of what you're doing, even though it's not not so common. Mm-hmm. Um, and create a community of composers here and young pianists and and young people who love neoclassical and 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 do like a bit bigger things here in Prague. That's very exciting. Well, I'm sure, and and you're obviously going beyond Prague, so. Uh, Maybe maybe that that community will become international. There's there's a lot. There are countless producers that are looking to connect with others. And uh, you know, I I just I just did a uh, I just did some work with some musicians out in Los Angeles. Speaking of Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, my recent single. Um, so a guy by the name by the name of uh, Johannes Grishacher interviewed him just uh, this past week. He does uh, like composer circle circles. He was telling me about that. Do you do you uh, do you know what I mean by composer circles? Like you sort of network with other composers and you you try to pump out a song for you know for the music libraries and so forth. Does that sound familiar to you? Is that something you guys do in, in Prague? You know what? That's really interesting because I'm usually focusing on my music, not about the people and doing something different because I have no spare time for for the community. But you know. Um, Right now, I'm sitting in my studio facility, which is a four big recording, you know, uh, rooms here in Prague, which is awesome, mm-hmm. like an old warehouse uh, factory. And one of the studio have a, my friend who is from Los Angeles. Uh, his name is Carmen Rizzo. He's a um, multi-nominated like Grammy uh, guy who did who works for uh, Coldplay, Rihanna, Paul wow. Comfort, big name Seal, blah 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 blah. So he moved to Prague because he loves Prague. So he's part of the studio, my friend. And he said, he told me like, hey, let's do something like for community. Let's build a community. Let's do like a composer circles, everything. So he started doing this in my studio here. So which is awesome because he got a time for do it. And he's great with connecting people much better than me. So he just started. <laughs> it's it's yeah, last year. So it's awesome. <laughs> We're better That's amazing. Him. Yeah. That's all. Well, that's super cool. Um. I just wish you had something like that in New York, because uh, personally, I'm I'm looking to to connect with uh, composers just like that, and I'm sure that they're. You I'm should sure move here. Some... What's that? <laughs> you should move here to Prague. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm sure my wife would be thrilled with that. <laughs> hey, honey, I'm picking up and going to Prague. <laughs> you know, Great idea. <laughs> you know, we all, I, I I'm I'm of the mentality. I've been in New York New York City for like uh, about 20 years now. Uh, and I always thought, oh, okay, like New York's the epicenter of, of music and composition, but but it's that's not really the case. I mean, there's so much going on in 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 other parts of the world, and yeah, uh, but it's, it's pretty much it. hidden, you know. So it's 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 uh, it's cool that I can talk about it in in your in your podcast, you know, because you know nobody knows how how is the neoclassical scene in Prague. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I just hope that I I hope that there are tons of people from New York and LA and other people who are who are connected with me here. Um, you know, in North America, and they take a look at what you're doing and and connect with you as well. That would be amazing. Um, yeah. I there's so much else to talk about w- with you. Um, just just because you've you've been down so many uh, professional paths and you you wear so many different hats. Um, you said you own you you own this to this four room studio that you're in right now. Uh, now, so you're renting out some of the space to to other people. How much of that space do you use yourself? Um, it's a pretty big, you know, I don't know how many meters, but it, it's, it's part of a warehouse. So, you know, uh, I was looking for the studio, like very slowly. And then I find out, you know, this beautiful warehouse in the middle of Prague in a, in a real, in the center. So it's very unique. So I said, okay, so I'll take it because it's super cool. So, you know, as you see the exposed brick walls, everything like, like New York style, let's say that with the, with the skylights, you know, and, mm-hmm. And uh, I said, okay, so I I I will create 
some mu- music studios slash audio post-production because it's a great for money, like doing sound, ADRs, everything for commercials and stuff. So it's it's earning money. So I can have a rest of the, of the studio for, for me and my friends for free because, you know, the second part is earning money for everything. Mm-hmm. So that was my idea to create something like uh, good in business. So I have a team of the people who works on the commercials, you know, commercial stuff. And then the second part is like for us, for composers who, who are looking for the new sounds, you know, and I have here... Because I I also could accommodate you know the the grand piano here and and uh, the pattern of pianos and also the up, uprights you know so it's perfect because you know it's huge and I know there's no here's no neighbors so I can play at night everything so it's awesome so I was very lucky that I have it because it was in COVID time so it was hard to build build something because you know it was shortage of cables I don't know the glass everything like you know no, no warehouses were were empty. So it was hard, but we did it, and uh, we started like a year and a half. Yeah. You uh, said you said you started a year and a half ago in that studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. I didn't understand the the COVID context because when COVID hit, um, that 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 probably forced you to. to uh, I mean, reshift. when you do, yeah, because you know, no workers were here. You know, it was you know everybody had to stay at home. So there was you know it was the bad time to start construction. <laughs> so bad time or a good time because everybody was everybody on my block um, here in Long Island. They were building homes during COVID. That's what they were doing. Nobody was staying inside. They were... If you build your home, it's cool because you stay in your house and you can build it. But you know, it was like in the middle of downtown, so it was hard, you know, to. To, to to do anything here so so uh we we actually like uh, get four workers and they were here for i don't know six or seven months they slept here and worked you know in isolation and building the studios huh wow that's uh that's a pretty intense yeah it was i'm sure wow but you did it and it looks beautiful yeah it's awesome i really you know like to be here and Here's a lot of inspiration, and cool vibe. So I need it for for my, you know, like uh, ideas. For sure. I mean, you gotta you gotta work in a nice, you know, just a, a nice place that inspires you. That I mean, you could be in a castle, <laughs> from what I from what I see. How old? What's how old is the the building? Do you have any information on that? Uh it's like a 1920 or something. It's not ah. at all. It's uh, made from bricks. And mm-hmm. concrete, concrete walls, and and uh, it's like a classical, you know, uh, you know, it's called the studio called Kabelovna Studios, and Kabelovna in Czech means cables. So they building cables and isolation uh, for cables here. So we we use the we, uh, use the cable uh, like for our name in Czech. So it's Kabelovna Studios. It's it's really cool. Uh, when you say cable, I'm thinking of the cable like this. So uh... Uh, they they did uh, like a cables for electricity, like for lights and oh. And... Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Very cool. So you have, uh, you know, you, you're working in a place that has some character. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Very it's nice. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, to shift the conversation a little bit, I, I'm curious about what your thoughts on are, are on the AI revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the tech, the tech giants have laid off hundreds of thousands of workers. I mean, I have friends, family members, people who are just like frustrated, uh, but they also, they're learning to pivot. And adapt. People are nervous. We don't know if we're going to get like a uh, need to get, to get a paid um, uh, paid living or a paid leave of absence, whatever you call it. Um, as AI is replacing our jobs, what are your thoughts on? Are you worried about about um, that within your your realm of of work as a producer composer? <clears throat> you know, I'm accepting the situation because it's. AI, it's everywhere, and I'm using AI as a helper. Like I, I using like for mastering. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes if I need some lyrics, I'm using, <laughs> I'm using mm-hmm. the AI. Also, mm-hmm. generate generating voices. If I, we, if we work for some, you know, commercial and and there is like a, I don't know the crowd talking very far somewhere in the corner. So you don't need to, you know, hire the act, 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 actress, you know. Uh, to do it but you can just you know put it in and generate the ai voices it's it's more than enough for like a second or third layer in your mix mm-hmm. yeah, but but in music 
sometimes you know i'm thinking like i have to do something different <laughs> maybe because you know in, in 10 years you know you will just press one button do like a super cool music and that and, and that's it yeah but and there's you know, it's it's That's that's the also the thing when I think it's very important to play live because nobody I, I cannot go on the stage and play the piano so the the playing the live shows is going to be unreplaceable you you still need someone who will play it so that's cool and uh the human part of the composition is also different different because you know AI going according some you know the codes but there's no soul no 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 nothing so maybe it's not going to be that perfect and that unique as the people because right now the world is full of the like a mediocre music like a lot of it so ai can do the same so maybe it's going to be the middle mid level it's going to be even more busy but then it's going to be the high level like the pieces of music really cool so i don't know so maybe maybe i'm wrong but but this is still going to be a layer for people Okay, so what I'm understanding from you is that you see that AI is being used as a tool, which we all are wanting, are using as composers. Uh, and to a certain extent, as it progresses, gets more complex, it might replace like the mid-level or maybe the below mid-level yes. of talent, but yeah. it's never going to really replace the upper echelon of people that have been like, th that have spent their lives composing, producing, performing. Um, so those people with with high level of skills in music composition don't really have a, have much to worry about mm -hmm. with respect to ai that's what you thought so yeah, yeah yeah also it's a question of budget if someone you know will shoot like commercial very cheap uh, low budget so they will use ai for generate some music for them because it's part of the budget but if so maybe not not just you know the people with with, with less skills but also the low budget you know things going to be there but in the second thing is Who is gonna get the royalties for from this music? Like the, that's gonna be like, you know, that that's what I don't understand. Who will get the money? Because maybe like the producers, okay, that's my music because I hit the button, so all the royalties go, can I go on my account or I don't know. There must be some regulation how to do it or like a watermark. This is the AI, so listen to AI, and this is the human work, so it's much better. So, so maybe the AI companies that are produce well, the AI companies. Companies they want as much profit as they can possibly get. So companies that are producing, that that are auto producing works, um, that that are prompted by you know somebody who wants to get a shortcut to to the end product, I guess uh, they're they'd be looking to get royalties, sync sync royalties, whatever. Um, exactly. I mean the brands who created the software or the company who yeah, uses the, the software companies. I'm imagining are going to be looking to try to replace what we're earning as composers uh sync royalties whatever uh i'm 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 assuming that that's what they're trying to do that's you know they're going but, but it's hard to say that. what kind of software do you, did uh, you used in studio for your piece maybe it's going to be more so there's going to be like a percentage i use this software and that software uh so it must be like a half 50 50 to royalties or you know it's 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 untraceable i think Uh, yeah, unless they, I guess there are ways to tag music or tag, I don't know if you could tag MIDI when you're rendering it into like MP3 or Wave. Mm -hmm. I, I would assume there's no trace, right, there's no traceability mm -hmm. aspects to the MIDI. Mm -hmm. So still, you know, it's a, like a gap, you know, with, with, in uh, in laws, how to work, you know, uh, uh, and because there could be like, let's say someone go to court because someone said, okay, you stole my, my melody, but the melody was generating, you know, in AI, but, the, but the guy who, who, you know, uh, you know, went to court says, okay, but I write or wrote this melody 20 years ago. So it's my melody. And it, it's, how can you have a, like a trial with AI? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's an interesting predicament that they're going to have to iron out at some point. Um, I mean, on, on, on the topic of just, generally royalties and sync licensing and sorry not sync license just licensing sealing other people's lines because pop music has so many of the same chord progressions uh there are some really public news stories such as the, in the case of ed sharan um you probably know some others uh where they were brought to court for like stealing whatever mm -hmm. song um that went that went uh top 40s 
And then like guys like Ed Sheeran had to fight back and say like, there's a million songs with a a minor F C G chord progression. So you can't really say I took this song from whatever, uh, from, I don't know, Stevie wonder or whoever, whatever other previous uh, pop artists. Yeah. But if I see uh, when you mentioned like the, the pop chart, pop music or R and B or, or hip hop, you know, it's, a lot of producers using loops just downloading loops you know and put loops you know next to each other and that's all so it's still like a first of like a ai or something like because they didn't create music they just you know bought the samples you know and put it in the right place and they said the software is going to be c major just lock it and everything's going to be fine and lock the tempo it's going to be 90 and it's easy so maybe this is also like first step of faking music before the ai I want to ask you, why do you think the world of loops and and the top 40s world, which is pretty much it drives the music industry in general among billions of listeners, why has that emerged? What are your thoughts on that, on the politics of that? And does it bother you? This is, you know, this is our time. So we live in the time when, when this is possible. So it's possible, you know, so it's it's there. But if you just use like a super cool voice on top of the MIDI. Sometimes you forget what's there like on the background. It's just some music helping the vocal be visible. I'm not talking about everybody uses loops. Everybody, uh, there, there's, I don't think there's any shame in using some aspect of loops or supplementing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about the backbone and the, the entire structure of songs uh, being comprised of loops, solely loops, and an entire industry that is purely loop based um you know i i guess that's what i'm referring to so my question is how do you why do you think that that first of all do you agree with with me that that has become sort of like the mainstay the mainstream mm -hmm. um production method um possibly in an effort to attract like the average joe schmo who wants to be a producer uh that's sort of what I'm referring to. Do, what are your, do you have any thoughts on that? I don't understand how do you, how do you mean it? Like, like uh, if you describe it more, so what's the point? Like, what do you mean? Well, okay. So, so for instance, like uh, a guy like Drake, for instance, I mean, would you say that his compositions are, are sophisticated or are they kind of just, are they kind of basic? What are your thoughts on, on something okay, like that? So, yeah, okay. I understand you. Um, it's mainstream. So it, you know, it's for people who consume consuming the mainstream is for fun, just having mm -hmm. fun. They don't think about, is it great chord progression or uh, did I hear the, the piano loop somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. else it's about to, to entertain people. So mm -hmm. if Drake can entertain people, it's right. So I don't care about, you know, if there's a loops or no loop. So it's, there is a message or no message. But in the 90s, the accessible fun equivalent, the that fun music was not was not Drake type music. It was alternative. That was the top 40s. And mm -hmm. that changed, that shifted drastically to the last 15, 20 years where it became, you know, not not everybody's like that. You know, Bruno Mars got some real like elements of instrumentation in his, in his music, uh Dua Lipa somewhat, and you know, I'm just talking about, I don't know, the Cardi B's, whatever. Like mm -hmm. I um, so I guess it doesn't bother you. It just it's not something that you really think about. I think it's also like the the time is faster right now than in nineties. In nineties, the the life of the of the music was much longer than here. The and next because here you will release one hip hop songs, and next day the competition is is bringing new songs. Is is a bigger fight. So you have to speed up your music. Maybe that's even the reason you're using loops because it's not about the quality. It's about the, you know, hitting the point again, 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 as, as fast as you can to be more visible. Maybe that's the reason why you're using, you know, uh, uh, the loops as a shortcut. And, and and what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> on that that's, new age? That, that's how it is. That, that's a life, you know, you, you cannot, you know, stop it. So you can just, you know, uh, observe it and, 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 and uh, be Ride okay. the wave. Yeah. Because I'm I'm doing Maneo classical music, I'm fine. So it's not like a my pound. So it's <laughs> <laughs> at the same time you're trying to inspire the younger generation to do neoclassical as opposed to the the world of loops. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know, 
So I also like um, you know, I have to be you know, uh, I'm also doing uh, electronic music for myself. So I'm just strictly like a, let's say like a melodic techno style music for myself just re as a refreshment so i know how to work with, with how, how to do like a cool sounds you know from real mm -hmm. synthesizers and not using loops and still sounds pretty repetitive as it should be so i i am all you and i have a lot in common i'm i'm entrenched in classical neoclassical and and also in electronic i love electronic I love mm -hmm. dance music. Um, so it's really, first of all, it's, it's an honor to speak to somebody like you as, as, as accomplished as you are. Uh, and also it's really cool to talk to somebody like, like yourself who has such a broad range of, of appreciation for many different genres. Um, like, you know, EDM, progressive EDM, that type of stuff. That's, I love that stuff. I, I eat it up. Um, I, I struggle at the same time to, like even when I have loops, I feel like I need to create, and I'm assuming you have, a, a similar experience as a producer for sync for like music libraries, HBO, whatever. I, uh, I feel the need to like switch up uh, like every eight bars. I feel I, I, I switch up the rhythm, switch up the, maybe the progression, just like make it a little bit different each time. So it's not just like the same, same yeah. type of thing. Is that, is that how you uh, think or feel? Yeah. Yeah. I think it, that's the, you know, biggest difference between uh, like a regular producer and an advanced producer because advanced producer, still working on every tracks on curves it's still like a life material going up and down you know with the filters with the equalization with the side chain you know attacking each other you know and all the relationship between between the sound so if you listen to like beginners in the studio so i i immediately can say who is like a like a up on who is still on the beginning because you know you can see the loop still repeating with the same so that's if there is no like a hip hop that you, you, you should be like this. But if you do like an EDM, so there's a lot of things like to spice up, you know, the music with all the effects. So the, you're saying what distinguishes the pros, like the, the boys from the men, so to speak, um, is that there's more variation. There's more, I guess that enriches the piece from bar to bar, as opposed to just like repetitive, mm -hmm. the same, literally the same rhythm, the same. Yeah. That's course. my observation. What I see when I listen, you know, from some people just, you know, or some people, a lot of people just, you know, uh, sending me, sending, sending me, uh, there's music, mm -hmm. just to have opinion, just why, well, what do you think about this or that? So that's my advice to so just make it live, just work on it and do it again, you know, and use the, all the effects and sounds, you know, and everything to, to, to have a soul in the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you, uh, do you just volunteer your time to, to take a look at at people's music or, or do you or do you have like a setup commission structure uh where people contact you to say hey you know can you give me your feedback on on how this song is working what you would how what i should tweak i'm always trying to answer you know all the questions but sometimes it's hard because i'm i have a deadline you know in, in the yeah. in my studio so but I'm always trying to help people with some advice because mm -hmm. that's the thing how create community and and i think the life is not just in music but in general it's to help each other mm -hmm. oh that's beautiful that's a beautiful kind of way of uh approaching music uh do you feel that there are a lot of barriers uh in the music industry sure <laughs> because you know i know maybe in america it's different because it's i think much easier to to live as a music composer in pretty cool life but here in prague is a small country with a small market so sometimes uh you struggle you know to get enough money you know to survive and and buy all the beautiful machines around here it's a pretty expensive hobby <laughs> yes so, yeah so sometimes uh they sell boundaries in the, um uh, in the music industry because you know i know a lot of talented people who is not good in the business and they have a, like a regular job and doing music as a, as a side job, which is pretty sad because they got a lot of time, but that's the life. Yeah. I know some extremely talented musicians that, uh, you know, they could do music full time, but they just, they don't, I, maybe they're just more prudent or they don't know how to, or they don't know necessarily the game and, and they end up having their day job and then they kind of produce music in the evening or they perform occasionally and um, I, I want to ask you, do, do you know, you, you said, you know, people like that. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Did you ever reach like a crossroads where you're trying to determine, okay, should I just do like the prudent decision and like, I don't know, become like an accountant uh, and maybe on the, the the side do music or you just, you're just like, I'm all in, I'm going to buy the studio or I'm just going to produce full time. Uh, from my age of 16, I'm full 100% in the music only. I don't want, I focus it only on our music, nothing more, even more than, than everything. Just, you know, I, I remember when I was a kid, you know, people were outside playing the football and I was in the studio with my Atari 1080, you know, working on a MIDI <laughs> in the Very queue. cool. Yeah. So, 16. Yeah. So I, I spent a lot of time to in studio and in, in, in try to, you know, see how it works because I was fascinating uh, with the computers and uh, how powerful they are. It's like a, it's not like an extension of my, of my, of my hand. It's, it's like a second brain, like a great cooperation. So, and, and every year is better and better. So I really enjoy you know, the time that we can use, have a laptop, go on vacation and, and see in Bali <laughs> on the beach and working on music. It's perfect. It- Bali, that's a pretty cool experience right there. Also, you bring like a mini, uh, like portable I have, piano. Yeah, I, have, I have a, yeah, I have a portable piano. Then uh, SSD drives, a lot of them. Then laptop, and also remotely, I'm using the servers in my studio, so I'm sending for some bank some data, and uh, and also I see all my history. So if someone call me, okay, so I need an edit of this music, so I always immediately download it from my studio from servers, you know, and work on the edits and. So you're even working on the beach. Yeah, I do. I do. Because I love traveling. There's a lot of inspiration. I'm still looking for inspiration. So I'm still traveling and working. That's my, the best. Yeah, like a, uh, <laughs> I'm living my dream. Like. That's great. And I'm sure a lot of people, you know, as- would aspire to do what you're, what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so let me ask you, when, when did you start composing and when did you start uh, performing? That's a great question because, you know, <clears throat> I always knew that I want to compose. I didn't want to be a great player, you know, playing, you know, other songs like classical music because I didn't get enough patience for repeating the same structures again, 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 and, and be number one. I tried at school, I had to, but I always trying to, like, express myself with the music. Like, you know, making a diary, someone, someone using, you know, diary and writing the notes, you know, and read and writing, you know, what, what they, you know, did that exact day. And and uh, then they can re- uh, read it, you know, <clears throat> like a, in the reverse, you know. Uh, but I try to do the same with the music. I just, you know, describing the word about, you know, around me with the music. So. Uh, I always know I, I'll be I'll be composer because that was my like a focus. Uh, you started composing. So, but mm-hmm. but when did you start professionally composing? Were you nineteen? Were you in the teens? Were you twenties, thirties? I'm just curious when, how early in your yeah, life it was you... hard because it was step by step. So I started working in TV as a sound engineer because I always you know uh, uh, study you know sound, which is really great to have a both like music and sound. Because if you're recording, you know everything, so it's very quickly, it's a quick process. So I love it, like like to have uh, all the you know uh, sound things you know in my head. Mm-hmm. So it was step by step. So I started working TV. They just you know uh, there was a competition. They're looking for the uh, for the new uh, jingles, like music jingles, like ID jingles. So I was a part of the competition, and they chose me. So. I won it, so I started, and then someone saw it, so from other TV just called me, okay, I, I saw, you know, the new design of the, this TV, so I really want to do the same, so are you in? So I said yes, and it was step by step, then then small, like a shorts, you know, with the people from school, like doing, scoring the, the shorts, and then TV shows and big movies and, and, and so hmm. on. Just one opportunity led to the next. And uh, and as far as the live performances, was that more of a recent thing that you'd, you know, like the last few years or you've been doing live performances, you know, for 20, 30 years? Yeah, I used to have a rock band. So I, I played a lot of it with friends like in, in my age of like a 25 or till like a 32. We traveling whole Europe, you know, but it was hard, you know, to be on the tour and also in studio. So I was want to be in studio. So it was like a part of, of my life. But also I use a lot of stuff you know uh, in my music from the stage like experience like you know i 
I, when I, when I played some chords in the progressions, I saw people, how they're reacting, you know, I, I, it was like a big school, you know, beyond the, on the tour with a band. So I use it in, in my, in my studio work. Oh, for uh, sure. So then they... I stop it and focus on the, on the music. And then I return like, like, like I mentioned before, like a two and a half years ago with the piano. Uh, then you focused two and a half years ago with, uh, on the piano. I started to play on the stage again. Oh, that's right. Okay, so you resumed, and and uh, but so you said that touring was a little tiring before. Yeah, it was hard. You know, just a rock band, so it was really hard. <laughs> and why why was it hard then, but touring now is not as hard? Because I play in just few few big shows, not like a everyday tour, like or like a two weeks in a row. It was hard. So so you find it's more conducive to I don't know raising a family or just being a home cat. I don't know what your family situation is, but. You, you find uh, less stress. I hope I'm gonna start family soon, oh. because it's a time. Because you know, I spend a lot of time on on, on the go, so I want right. to set, settle down a little bit. And the Prague is beautiful, so I think I would choose Prague, you know, to stay here, and then remotely, you know, uh, working from Prague, and then travel like everywhere. That that sounds like the dream. Uh, a lot of people complain. A lot of people that I know of, they complain about the stressors of the tours, but they love it so much. They love the audiences and the just the just the experience there's nothing quite like it yeah. um but it sounds like you get the best of both worlds because you get to make music for film and you get to still do the concerts but you don't have to be exhausted on a tour bus exactly it's like a bonus <laughs> the show is bonus and i'm using like a special i love to play not like in classical concert halls but i love to play in some in special places so my my last gig was in the church so it was really all church and there was an old piano. And in 1945, when Germans left uh, after the uh, Second War, Prague, so they left the piano in the church. So the piano was there uh, since 1945, and nobody touched it. So we just a little polish it, you know, tune it, you know. And then I played a really cool concert on in on the great place on the great old piano. So it was awesome. So I love this like a special atmospheric, you know, things. And that and that lends itself to like playing a, a piece of of uh, of art uh, of history really lends itself to the type of music that you work with because you blend the the past with the present, mm -hmm. uh, with classical uh, and then and then with modern music. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. You know, I, I love it. Yeah, and also now, the church I, and the atmosphere of the church was awesome. You know, all the statues, you know, and everything. So the resonance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of echo was there. Mm -hmm. So beautiful well now speaking of echo because you do you do studio production here with the with the brick wall behind you um what do you do as far as treatment of the room or is that even a concern you know uh, we use the treatment on the ceiling and the shape of the room because when i uh, building you know the studio i said okay i want to i want to see the walls i i and i i want to have a no carpet on the floor i want to see the like a classical like a, a concrete uh, uh floor so mm -hmm. it means uh, every uh, you know and 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 i visit a lot of architects and architects okay so it's not possible next <laughs> and then i found <laughs> someone who said okay so let's try it because i told him so right now the technology like uh, we're using the uh jenna like the ones the speakers who got a GL gml software with microphones and and a room compensation and i tested it and I was so impressed. Impressed. So I said, "Okay, this is the, like a first thing." So, so because when I when I see the back in, in the studios in the past, so you you had to, you know, build like a super cool acoustic room, and then you put the speakers to the room. But right now, so you can use the beautiful room, and then this this smart speaker, and and the speaker will compensate all the, all the things around. But this is studio number three, so I mostly this is for composing, and I love to using the headphones. Because it's like a, my own, like an intimate world, you know, and I'm I'm, I'm trapped in 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 uh, in it, so I love it. And the second and and the first studio, they are more treated because you know we're using you know the speakers for presentation with clients and stuff, so it must be perfect. Oh, interesting. Okay, so to understand, like, because I, I can't see, but generally you have like you don't have a rug on the ceiling. Do you just have like foam sound foam? It's Special, yeah. special treatment. It's, it's a black. The, the, the ceiling is black. It means, you know, you, you cannot see it. Uh, and, uh, and there's a skylight in the middle. So it's like a 
you know against the light so you cannot see the ceiling so you can do a lot of like a special like a like a um how can i say it? it's, it's hanging you know a little bit you know uh under the ceiling the panels and also <clears throat> so are they drilled in or yeah, yeah. And also my good? my brother he's a painter and we uh try to experiment painting on the acoustic canvas and it it's it's uh possible so he did beautiful paintings but it's filled with acoustic material so it's like a acoustic panels but looks like a real painting so we we have a lot of paintings here but they're also like acoustic treatment uh panels huh so it's it's uh pretty unique and beautiful that's for I, i'd love to see it, i'd love to see it, a picture oh uh, yeah yeah if, if you go to instagram and look for kabelovna with k, k uh studios so you will mm -hmm. see you know uh, the pictures with uh big paintings and, and the big big paintings are acoustic isolations and also we use the the tables are are you know on top of the tables is acoustic like a uh what is it foam special foam uh plastic you know like a pvc or something oh okay and, uh, now, yeah a lot you... of like hidden tricks here now kabalovna and i'm actually just going to hold this up to the screen so like well it's 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 a little hard to to see but this is this is uh, correct. is this, this your is correct my... instagram yeah so that's uh that's Carl's instagram and, and you can see kabalovna is at the top here uh his um his studio and i'll link that to the show notes um so people can can check out your studio and check out your amazing work um because, yeah the, you know I, i'll just quickly finish because you know when i build it i i I want to have a build the studio which is unique and you feel good in the studio because all the studios are the same, you know, every panels everywhere, no lights, you know, artificial light and a little bit like a bunker. So I want to create something with a high ceiling, a lot of light, open, like you can breathe and you can just get inspiration with no cables, all just minimal studios. I try to hide all the cables in the machine rooms everywhere, like nothing, almost nothing there. So huh. like everything is in the box. So to huh. be focused on, on ideas and not on the, like a technical stuff. Yeah. Well, that's, um, uh, again, another thing that separates the men from the boys. That's, uh, that's a pretty cool concept. Uh, I've been to a number of studios and they're not always trying to hide the, hide the cables behind, but, uh, the visuals is a big deal in terms of inspiration. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's very uh, clean. You were mentioning, uh, you were mentioning, about your upbringing, which I actually almost forgot to bring up because it's really a fascinating thing that I think all of our listeners would be interested in just the, the transition. You said, you mentioned that after World War II, you, um, well, I'll, I'll let you elaborate, but in in general, uh, you were born into a communist uh, Prague, which then subsequently became democratic in the nineties or so. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, you know, because uh, I, I got a lot of questions how did you start with the music and what has happened when you started so it was very hard because my father I, uh, you know i was born in 1974 which is communism so and be musician and communist in time they are you know at the edge of the society you know like very poor people you know it was like a like a really bad job and my father told me uh, told me like do something normal. Be like a, I don't know, a lawyer or a journalist or, or or doctor. Don't do music. But I was stubborn and I said, okay, I just I don't know about it. I couldn't help myself. I will do music, and uh, so it was very hard because <clears throat> in communism, if you want to go on the stage with a band and play live gigs for people, yeah. So so you before you go on the stage, you had to go to, uh, and stay before the committee. And it was a group of the communists, you know, and you have to play the songs for them and they were listening to music. If the lyrics are okay and are are, in, are are not against the regime or if the distortion on the guitar doesn't sound too like a Western world, it means like, you know, it was very hard. So so a lot of, you know, uh, you know, uh, bands didn't have a stamp. So they, they didn't, they didn't. Uh, like through. a stamp of approval from the government? Exactly. So it was even hard to play live shows because, you know, there was a lot of restrictions, you know, from the state, from the government. So it was really, really bad, bad, like a bad time to be musician in communism. And uh, the communist regime you know, ended in 1989. 
and uh, I was 16 in the high school, so I remember it. So, and then my real life started because you know we opened the borders, you know we st we start democracy, you know from the scratch. And then you can buy the synthesizers, everything because you in communism there was no stores with the synthesizers, nothing. You know, we just you you, you could buy only local stuff. So, <laughs> and maybe some things from Russia, you know, but not from from the Western like a part of Europe. So it was even impossible, you know, to buy computers, music instruments, synthesizers, nothing. Huh. So I, I, I'm actually, so Stalin was not really into music, but only into like certain, what, military type music? He must have been to some form of music. Like propaganda music. Let's say that like, like you know, great text, like, you know, let's work together and, and I don't know, and, and be red, be more red stars, you know, in like our country, you know, and, and all those, you know, bullshits. That, so, I don't know. It sounds like I don't even know what to say. I, I don't want to offend anybody, but uh, obviously he lived in a very black and white world where exactly. uh, there's good and there's bad, and you know mm -hmm. if it doesn't serve his interests. I mean, people. I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, I would think that I don't know. Commu See, I, I'm actually surprised to hear while there's obviously plenty of not so positive things to be s said about a you know totalitarian state. Uh, there's when I play, I have to like when I play music for uh, people who grew up in communist Russia, they have an absolute love and appreciation for music, an, an intense love that I don't see in the United States. So that's why I guess I'm a little surprised to hear that, yeah, music isn't really as valued in communism. Yeah, but but but, but you know, it was semi here because. There was just few bands, you know, and, and people were were hungry to listen to music because you know no shows, you know, just the same bands again, again. It was boring. So and when you when you see some artists playing, you know, classical music. So and and we got all the classical music in the school, so we got a lot of you know uh, education. So we were so happy to see it. Uh huh. Huh. That's very interesting. Um. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, like, I played a number of weddings in the, uh, back in the day, and um still still currently and i find that like yeah you're playing like a wedding for uh uh an italian crowd or something like that they're not really into the top 40s they're not into like the popular music as much uh, i mean obviously with exceptions but there isn't the same kind of fervor as like a wedding uh of uh where most people are are from russia or from austria or something like that um or from from uh originally uh, you know a communist um location i don't know just just a thought mm -hmm. you know um so uh, interrupt you but but i remember one story because you know i don't know what happened but you know the, the regime in the communism ended in 1989 but i think one year before the end depeche mode had a gig in prague in communist prague and anton corbin you know the 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 photographer of uh of Depeche Mode did a really great pictures like that, like a super cool, like a Western <laughs> band from Western mm -hmm. Europe, uh, staying in the communist country. So it was like a poor country. So it was really cool contrast, you know. So you gotta uh, look it up. So it's, it's it's awesome. Maybe maybe the regime, you know, feel like it's going to end. So they just open a little bit, like a little bit gap, you know. And Depeche Mode can can uh, uh, go to play uh, one gig in in Prague. I don't remember Depeche Mode. It's been it's been years since I listened listened to them, but that's uh, but they're. I saw them live recently. What's I that? saw them, I saw them live recently, like I don't know months ago, and it was still great. Really? Yeah. So uh, this is is really fascinating uh, to have, have grown up in in a place um, at a time when you know in the late seventies when it's very different a government type um, structure regime uh, where music your sole passion was undervalued and you stuck with it and you wanted to make it you know make it work regardless and then fortunately for you it could have gone the other way around you know could could still be to this day communist you mm -hmm. stuck with it and now you're a successful musician and and i'm sure you're thrilled in retrospect just looking back hindsight i made the right decision yeah you know yeah i was super lucky maybe because it's it's like you know, like I said before, I'm living my dream. It's 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 awesome and very 
you know, thankful every day when I wake up. So I, I just open my eyes and say to myself, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just living my life in, in beautiful life. Is there um, one word that you can use to describe um, that feeling, I guess? One word? To describe the yeah, feeling? one word. Could you put that into one word? Like, I don't know, grateful, blessed, something like that. Just to describe that feeling. Appreciation. Okay, you feel uh -huh. like be humble. Like, thank you so much for for everything what I have. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, uh, how do you? Is there something you 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 know? What are what are your you know? With that in mind, what are your goals for your own future? What are you looking to do? Uh, are you looking to impact the world in some some way, shape, or form? Impact you, you know the next generation, like you'd mentioned earlier. What are your goals over the next year, and then over the next five, ten years? My project is different. I don't, you know, I don't want to influence some people or something. I just doing the thing what I love, the music, and I want to stay and doing the music. That's my only goal to just keep on going, because even if it's gonna be in the same level, I'm super happy. And I hope it's going to be much bigger because maybe some other great movies waiting for me to score and I'll be really happy to do it. But I want to do music. I don't want to do anything else. I'm just focusing on this. As well, always. That's amazing. I can't say that about everybody that I've spoken with, that, that they're just kind of happy with where they're where they're at. But that's uh, that's a true blessing. And I'm sure people could, uh, could take that to heart and uh, take that as inspiration that, mm -hmm. you know, you could be happy in, in the present. Is there yeah. something you'd like? Yeah. Is there something? Uh, go ahead. I go ahead. I, I, that's really important to be happy in any moment because you know it's like a mirror. If you do the music, so it's like a mirror. So the music can you know, you know, carry your uh, mood. Yeah, I don't know a lot of people who are in your position. Uh, so that's uh, I would say that's blessed from my vantage point to be like, yeah, I'm just happy where I'm at right now. Like I just I really don't know that many people who are like. Yeah, I don't need I don't need I don't need anything different in my life. This is like amazing like what what I have at the moment right here right now. Mm -hmm. Um and if something else comes my way, oh, so be it. So that's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> uh is there any advice that you'd like to share with uh maybe you know our listeners, uh, young people, young aspiring musicians, composers? You know, the thing if you are a composer beginner just do what you feel. Just observe more people around you you know how they work in but do your own stuff to be unique to be more visible don't do the you know the regular stuff like you know people want to hear just you know uh don't listen to people just listen to your heart listen to your heart so don't be concerned about the elements around you don't be concerned about the regime that you're under just listen to your heart yeah, follow and, your goal and, and and don't 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 be concerned with the numbers of youtube how many hits you get in instagram just you know focus on the music just you will need it you know because it's a marketing you know tools for you but don't you know uh put it attention too much too much attention on social media and stuff just you know be in the studio and work some call that vanity metrics but uh but yeah um so those vanity metrics maybe shouldn't be as emphasized as much as they as they are that's some of the the recent exciting projects that you're in the middle of so if you want to share that with with our audience briefly yeah you know, maybe i will mention just the just the one and uh i recently finished the movie called brothers and uh it's a czech slash international movie because uh there was a, like an international crew working on it and uh but it's a czech uh, movie so the czech republic sent this movie uh to the oscars as uh, work as uh, fighting for in, in the international uh, movie or foreign movie category, so maybe next year I'll be on Oscar. So it's awesome. <laughs> I'm happy. That we we hope to see you in the Oscars. That'd be really exciting. Thank you. Okay. Hey, hey, well, well, I want to thank you so very much for coming on this show. I'm glad we could we were able to work out the time. It's uh, it's really it's an honor to speak with you. It's an honor to speak with somebody who's as ins inspiring as you are who's as happy in your place as you are and uh, who's as impactful as you are in the music music realm. And um, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thanks so much for tuning into the 